here's an example of uh, superposition of waves so in this uh, animation so uh, I'm sending two square wave pulse uh, in opposite direction you can clearly see right uh, they interfere uh, and they produce a, a resultant wave and according to the superposition principle it says the resultant wave is just the algeb algebraic sum of the individual wave uh, displacement so as you can see when they meet at this time uh, you can see the, the amplitude, the, the resultant wave have almost double amplitude. So they meet um, uh, constructively. So this type of interference, this type of superposition is called constructive interference. Now here I picked uh, uh, square wave pulses, you know, of opposite phase. So one is up, one is down. And let's see. Uh, what happens uh, when they superpose so as expected right so when they meet at this time somewhere this at this position this time they completely disappear Let, let's see the uh, resultant so resultant right uh, is uh, here they completely meet opposite uh, in opposite phase and they completely cancel out and this type of superposition or this type of interference is called uh, destructive interference right so the output is simply the superposition of two individual you know uh, wave displacement so from the theory uh, and equation we saw that uh, uh, so standing wave is formed by due to the superposition of two identical waves traveling in opposite directions as you can see here uh, these two waves are identical waves you know having same frequency same amplitude but traveling in opposite direction as you can see they have same frequency and same wavelength and same amplitude and then when they superpose as you can see this is the resultant wave and it's just um, uh, vibrating you know up and down the whole the wave pattern is not moving along x direction so that's why this is called a standing wave you know, so standing wave is formed due to the superposition of two waves traveling in the opposite direction. So, and this point where there is no oscillations at all, you know, this point is called a node, and and this point, however, is vibrating with maximum amplitude right here. This point, or this point, or this point. This is called anti-node in terms of standing wave language. So in a real lab, uh, the, you can form a standing wave by using this uh, mechanical vibrator, you know, and uh, string fixed at one end. Uh, both ends are fixed and one end you use the mechanical vibrator. So mechanical uh, vibrators send some signal, right, in this direction. And that wave will be reflected off the other end, reflected off from this fixed end, this pole and at certain frequencies at certain frequency uh, these two waves so the wave traveling in this direction and the reflected wave from the other direction you know they will superpose and uh, they will superpose and form a standing wave so this is something like that so uh, remember you need a two waves traveling in the opposite direction so uh in the lab uh, how do you actually achieve uh, the standing wave so we can do that very easily in the lab actually you just need a string elastic string with some mechanical vibrator and at one end you know both ends are fixed actually both ends are clamped uh, and at one end you use the vibrator which uh, you can slowly change the frequency and the other end is fixed at the pole so what we do is you slowly increase the frequency until you see the first harmonic so uh, maximum vibration so this is called first harmonic where you have two nodes and one anti node right uh, this is a slow version of course uh, and this is called first harmonic and once you find the first harmonic frequency the next harmonic is simply the uh, integral uh, you know integer multiple of the the first harmonic so 25 so you will expect the second harmonic uh, at uh, you know 2 times 25 so uh, let's see Let's go to higher mode 
so let's go to 50 hertz and you see you have two antinode and three nodes right and this is called second harmonic and then third harmonic will be uh, the three times the uh, you know uh, first harmonic based on the, the theory right so it should be uh, 75 so at 75 hertz you will see three peaks three antinodes so this is in third harmonic mode right and then you can go to higher resonance you know higher modes and that's how you achieve you see the actual uh, you know uh, resonance uh, this is also called resonance uh, act, uh, standing wave in a lab you know uh, and uh, so the next video I'm gonna show you uh, the actual you know standing wave in a string uh, so what we uh, we could do in, in our lab and you can do you know you can go to higher mode you know slowly increase the frequency until you see the resonance so whenever whenever you see the this uh, peak you know maximum vibration with some pattern like this standard wave pattern standing wave pattern uh, it is called resonance so resonance happens when uh, this driving frequency uh, equals the natural frequency of the string and then we you achieve uh, the resonance the scenario of a, of a jump. Now, I can find any of the other, harm, all of the other harmonics are multiples of this number. So, we just saw that two times this number was the second harmonic, or the second possibility. Well, if I go three times this number, I should get the third harmonic. Well, three times 8.5, I guess that was that around 25.5. And there we go. So that's the third harmonic. How many wavelengths is this? Well, it's one and a half. One and one half wavelengths. And it's easier to see in high speed. So check out this shot with the high speed camera and uh, verify for yourself that it is one and one half wavelengths. So again, third harmonic, one and a half wavelengths. Well, let's go to the sixth harmonic. The sixth harmonic will just be double this frequency. So we go up to 50. And there we go. That's the sixth harmonic. Beautiful. And it's six times the fundamental frequency, which we measured in the beginning to be 8.5 hertz. So next, uh, I'm going to show you uh, the resonance or standing wave uh, uh, on a pipe uh, so this pipe this open end organ pipe you know uh, the pipe could be open at both ends or one end could be open one end could be closed and different options so first I'm going to show you the resonance or a standing wave pattern you know uh, whose um, both ends are open so this is the fundamental this is the first you know standing wave pattern you will see and below that below that frequency you won't see any uh, standing wave pattern because it has to meet uh, the boundary condition the boundary condition is that uh, both ends should be at put the position of anti nodes right because it's free to vibrate right because it's the free end so let's go this is the fundamental and this is in terms of amplitude right this is in terms of displacement and this is in terms of pressure because sound wave is a pressure wave, right? A pressure uh, and the displacements are, are opposite. So you just focus on this diagram. So let's go to the second harmonic. So this is the second harmonic. Uh, this is the third harmonic. And look at the how your particles are vibrating because sound wave is a longitudinal wave. And higher, you can go to higher and higher and the pitch of the sound will increase. And now, however, if you do the same thing with the one side end, uh, one and uh, close the other end uh, you know open so if you use the source of sound somewhere here uh, whose frequency can be changed then this is the very first harmonic this is the first harmonic our fundamental vibration where since this end is uh, this end is closed this has to be the position of node this end is open so this has to be the position of anti node so that's how you figure out uh, the first harmonic and then you can go to second harmonic third harmonic fourth harmonic and so on okay um, 
and you can also play with both ends uh, you know this is if both ends are closed then this is similar to the standing wave on a string